the universe continues to amaze and perplex astronomers. When we observe the night sky in all its beauty and color and texture and light, we can't help but stand in awe and wonder. We marvel at the magnitude of the galaxy. We're fascinated by the perfect placement of each and every star, every constellation. The sun and the moon and the planets eternally draw our curiosities. We find ourselves thinking, what an incredible piece of artwork, what a dazzling portrait for us to behold. It takes our breath away. And yet the truth is, the universe, although seemingly static and complete, is still ever expanding. It's still moving, shifting, changing, and even accelerating. In fact, the universe has no bounds and will expand forever. You could say the universe is unfinished. The Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the planets. He made two great lights, the sun and the moon, and he also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And amidst all of this vast expanse and beauty and light sits our humble little planet, occupied by the magnum opus, the ultimate of all of God's creation. People, you and me, made in the image of God himself, each one of us with a plan and a purpose set for our lives when God knit us together in our mother's womb. And so we follow that purpose. We set foot on an adventure of a lifetime. We journey towards the great unknown and trust in our hearts that God has prepared the good work for us to do in advance with great reward to be shared as we proceed together on this holy mission. We are still being refined. We are still being perfected. God is not finished with us and God is not finished building his kingdom. There are others who don't know yet their true purpose, who haven't yet experienced the mighty work of God in their life. And we will meet them along the way. New stories of life change and transformation will inspire and encourage. We will press forward in partnership with the creator for all to build and dream and hold space for more souls who have not yet experienced the vast love of our great God who sent his only son to enter time and space on a mission for everyone. The road is uncertain, but the destination is clear. The path is uncharted, but we are pioneers. We do not know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. The work of God is evident among us, and we believe his mighty work in us and for his kingdom is still yet unfinished. HSM, Sarah here. Well, we are starting off a new series this week, and this one is really extra special. We're kicking off a series called Unfinished that goes alongside a historic season in our church as we seek God's plans for our future. We're embarking on a season in our church unlike any other, one that will require openness to God working deeply in and through us in new levels of faith and generosity. This series is particularly exciting because every campus and every ministry will be doing this series together. In this series, we will look to the example of Abraham, a man in the Bible that was called to go beyond his comfort level in commitment, obedience, and service to God. During these four weeks, we're gonna take a look at our personal unfinished spiritual lives and our church's unfinished story as we head into all that God has for us in the future. We're hoping and praying to end this series with some commitments that help us to build uncompromising faith, share unprecedented hope, and spread unrelenting love. We're looking at pursuing this week what really matters by pursuing the kingdom of God as opposed to our world. We're looking at an unfinished kingdom mindset today. The series is meant to give us some perspective to evaluate our life, the future of our church, and what is meant to matter to us as Christians. Don't we all need some perspective sometimes? You know, I think of the movie Lion King. There's a few scenes in that movie where Mufasa is trying to give Simba some perspective. Let's check out one of the iconic scenes where Mufasa is trying to explain the breadth and the intricacies of the animal kingdom and Simba's responsibility to it. Let's check out this clip. Look, Simba. 
Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Wow. A king's time as ruler rises and falls like the sun. One day, Simba, the sun will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king. And this will all be mine? Everything. Everything the light touches. I love that movie. And it's true, sometimes we need some perspective to see beyond our day-to-day -day life to the vision of all that matters and all that is to come. Kind of like this. We need to have more than a bird's eye view, more than a space view. We need to have a heavenly view of our life and the world we live in. Our perspective as believers comes when we think about the kingdom of God and what matters in the kingdom of God. A kingdom perspective on life would change the way we live, the way we prioritize our time, the way we give of our resources, and the way we love and serve others. Okay, but what is the kingdom of God? Well, Jesus talks about it in John 18, 36. When he's on trial before he ultimately gets sentenced to die on the cross, Jesus says, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews, but my kingdom is not from the world. So what does this kingdom have to do with you and me? Well, after you've given your life to Jesus and you're born again, you must begin to live for God, live in accordance with what the teachings of God say for his children in the Bible. And in every matter, always place the kingdom of God first in your consideration. Be concerned about how your actions will affect the kingdom of God. Will it increase or decrease the kingdom of God? Will it bring honor or dishonor to the, God's kingdom? Your consideration should be whether it will be advantageous to the kingdom of God and not only for your personal benefit. It says in scripture, God will give you all that you need from day to day if you live for him and make the kingdom of God your primary concern. It's in Matthew 6, 33. So now we know what the kingdom of God is. And in this series, we're gonna learn how to be people who pursue the kingdom of God in all areas of our lives. In this series, we're gonna look at an example in the Bible, really one of the first major examples of a believer prioritizing a relationship with God and the values of the kingdom. And, and he was not perfect. Oh, no, 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 definitely not. But God called him to be a leader of God's kingdom and God's kingdom ways on this earth. We can see the call of Abraham, this character in Genesis 12, verses one through three. It goes like this. The Lord had said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to, other, to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. He did just that. And in this series, we will jump around throughout Abraham's story to see how he tried to pursue God's kingdom above his own. If you're just checking out this faith thing, well, welcome to the front row of seeing what it looks like for believers to be 100% in. Welcome to seeing what the goal is, what we should care about, and what we should prioritize. If you've committed your life to the Lord and have a relationship with Jesus, plan to join the rest of our church and be challenged together to grow spiritually as you care more and more about kingdom things. I encourage you to believe that there's more to come in your personal spiritual walk and in this church. With your time, with your thought life, pursue an unfinished kingdom mentality. Think and care about what matters to the kingdom instead of our world. Pray for what is to come in your life, in our church, and in the world because of our community of believers. What a beautiful place to start. We are unfinished, but we're pursuing God's kingdom. We're thinking about what is important to the kingdom and praying that we would be able to do more with our time and our talents and our treasure to pour into it. What if we really leaned in during this series? What if we really see ourselves as unfinished and the story of our church is unfinished and really challenge ourselves to learn and grow and commit? Pastor Gene is asking for 100% engagement during the series from our church. And he's including HSM in that hope. What if we gave this series, these lessons, 100% of our time, reflection, commitment, and action? 
Let's dream about what that can mean for your faith and your future in our group time.